I wanted to ask a question about a recent dairy study that is pretty new research that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, mm -hmm. suggesting that saturated fat in dairy may be beneficial for cardiovascular disease risk. And when I dug deeper and worked with our science scientists to, to dug deeper, it, it was kind of the, the typical dairy study where it was a gross over-adjustment and many of the mes methods that they, they did. One of them is the author writes that saturated fats from both dairy and non-dairy sources were adjusted for body weight, which certainly seems like an over-adjustment because we know that these dietary constituents here in this study increase body weight. So why would we control or uh, why would they control or attempt to eliminate the effects of that? And it, it, it's like, okay, like what you were saying earlier, it's like studying the relationship between cigarette smoking and dying early, but controlling for lung cancer, heart disease, and stroke, right? If, if yeah. A goes to B goes to C, then eliminating B from the chain is a big, is a very big problem. And I, I feel like we see this over and over, but the media just sees the abstract and it's like, oh, yes. dairy's fantastic and doesn't have uh, it has benefits for cardiovascular health. There have been I, dozens of studies over the past 10 or 20 years that have said saturated fats are good for yeah. you. They don't increase cardiovascular risk, but there have been hundreds of studies that say the opposite, right? But every time one shows it's not harmful, that's when the media runs with right. it because everybody likes to hear good news. Everybody wants their cheeseburger. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, and every single time you look into these research studies and look who funded it, how the methods were, uh, how they controlled things, you're always going to find major issues. And honestly, we are incentivized as, as researchers in the medical world to publish studies that show some kind of an impactful outcome. And, you know, it's so it skews things, it skews the research, or it introduces bias. If uh, they did this big study and it didn't show anything, the journal's not going to publish it. And so they're always going to do some statistics, some way to show some kind of a meaningful number. And it's just, it's just really wrong. There's so many issues with this. And that's why you got to look at the funding, the research, the methods. And then even if there was one study that showed some outcome that contradicts the general consensus about diet, uh, you can't just make any conclusion based on one study. You have to look at the entirety of research, entirety of all the, the studies that have been published and, and it's not just clinical trials. You've got to look at other things such as, you know, epidemiologic studies. You have to look at population-based studies like the Blue Zones that, you know, didn't really have high-fat dairy for, uh, predominantly as a predominant part of their diet. And when you put the basic science in there where we know the cholesterol and the saturated fats, saturated fats bad for you and the animal protein is not good for you, you, you kind of put all the different pillars of research together it's, it's pretty obvious that that high fat dairy is not good for you and not good for cardiovascular health, but there's so much, so much money in this. You know, America is one of the very few countries now that have not removed dairy as a part of their food guide as having its own food group. Canada has removed it. Most European countries have removed it, but still on the United States food plate, there's a big, big thing right there in the corner, dairy, three servings, low fat. Uh, we'll, we'll get there eventually, but it is very unfortunate that the media runs with these headlines. It confuses people and it's wrong. I always tell my patients, you have to go by guidelines from the major medical societies who say a plant-based diet is the way to go, which excludes dairy. Yeah. It, the, I, I was thinking about cholesterol as well, because I feel like there are a, a few studies that, that came out and this is always banter about cholesterol, that consuming cholesterol, this is the other side, right? Oh, it's been shown that consuming cholesterol has nothing to do with your actual cholesterol score, which just doesn't even make any sense when you say that out loud. But we've seen that a, a few different times. What oh, yeah. And that's because of how they do the research. So there was a big deal back, I believe it was 2010, when they were doing the, uh, the dietary guidelines for Americans. And uh, the egg industry funded a bunch of research, which showed that if you add some eggs to your diet, it didn't really change your cholesterol numbers, right? So you take somebody who already has a high cholesterol content in their diet, a higher saturated fat content, you add a little bit more, eh, it doesn't really budge the numbers much, right? And so uh, they know how to design these studies to get the outcome they want. And so they kind of told the USDA writing committee, oh, look, you know, you add more eggs, it doesn't change your cholesterol numbers, no big deal. The funny analogy that you think about for that is um, now I'm in California, marijuana is legal in California. I don't smoke marijuana myself, but here's the analogy. 
is if you smoke one joint, I hear people get really, really high from smoking one joint. You smoke a second joint, eh, a third one, nothing. Doesn't give you any more <laughs> extra benefit, right? <laughs> That's kind of like what that sounds eating really cholesterol dangerous. is in your diet. <laughs> Yeah. If you're eating uh, if you're eating a bunch of cholesterol in it, boom, your cl- your LDL cholesterol will go way up if you just start eating some cholesterol, right? But if you add some more, add a couple eggs, eh, it only goes up a teeny bit. Add like five eggs, doesn't budge. You're already saturated. You've already eaten so much cholesterol. Adding more is not going to raise your, your blood cholesterol numbers more. But here's the key. When you do controlled feeding studies, what they call metabolic ward studies, where they literally lock people in and they control everything they eat and monitor their cholesterol numbers. Any amount of cholesterol in the diet raised the LDL cholesterol. Hence, the statement from the National Academy of Medicine that said, we did not set a limit for how much dietary cholesterol is safe to eat because any cholesterol that is consumed will raise your LDL cholesterol number. Any amount above 0% of energy. And that is, again, a statement from one of the the biggest medical organizations in the world uh, saying that. And that's based on metabolic controlled feeding studies where you literally lock people in and control everything. So we need to not let the egg industry and these other industries fund these research studies to confuse people. And then when uh, when doctors found out about how the USDA guidelines were going to maybe say that cholesterol was no longer a nutrient of concern, they all freaked out and got said, no, this is wrong, and, and kind of educated the USDA writing committee about all these metabolic feeding studies and, and, and all these things. And they, they didn't end up saying that. They ended up saying, don't eat any cholesterol. They went from cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern, which was a push by the egg industry, to going completely the opposite direction, saying don't eat any cholesterol yeah. at wow. all. And that's where it stands today, more than a decade later. Because our body makes cholesterol. We have to remember that it makes what it needs, because apparently you do need some, but your body makes it. You don't need to add it um, yeah. through It is food. not an essential nutrient, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 